Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Solar. So today we're going to be reviewing the EcoWorthy Server Rack Battery. And this is one of those batteries that a lot of people like. It's pretty popular as one of the best budget batteries out there. And we're going to test it today and see how it performs. But this battery, the price changes a little bit on it. And, um, but it's always, I think, usually below $1,000. Sometimes I think it's even lower than $800, which is a great price for a server rack battery. And this thing seems to be fairly loaded up with features. I mean, there's only a couple options on here that they're missing. So let's go ahead and we'll dive into it. So just like the majority of other server rack batteries, this is 100 amp hours at 51.2 volts. Uh, they say that they have A grade lithium iron phosphate cells on the inside that are rated for 6,000 cycles down to 80% depth of discharge. And these batteries have a 10 year warranty. So over the last couple days, I ran each one of these batteries through the CBA5, which is a battery analyzer. And each one of these tested at over 105 amp hours. So they do have full capacity. So the, the cells, the battery cells on the inside are good and you're getting a good bang for your buck. I just looked up the price. Today it was $879 on EcoWorthy's website. And that's, you know, that's probably $200 cheaper than most other budget batteries. And it's definitely $500 to $700 cheaper than some of the name brand batteries. So as we look at the front of the battery, you can see there's covers that go over the battery terminals and they just kind of slide and snap on. And then you can actually point these, you know, up, down, sideways, so you can turn them whatever way you want. The way you power this on, you have to turn the breaker on first, and then that provides power to the BMS, and then you can turn the BMS on. And this is a 100 amp BMS from JBD. So on this battery, you have a series of LED indicators, and there are six of them to show the battery state of charge. There is some dry contacts on here. I believe you can program them through the app. And then it has CAN bus communication, RS-45 communication, and then inner battery communication. So the dip switch on the communication board, that is to set the address of the battery. And you can have a total of 15 of these batteries connected together and communicating together. That's a maximum of 1500 amp hours. So one feature you can't see is that this battery has built-in Bluetooth and it has Wi-Fi. So if you're just setting up the batteries, you can connect with Bluetooth and set up all the communication protocols. You can see all the data, cell temperature, state of charge through your phone, but you can also set up the Wi-Fi on the inside. You can get it on your Wi-Fi network and then you can monitor the batteries pretty much anywhere you have internet access. So the two features that this battery is missing is it doesn't have a screen. So you just can't quickly go to the screen and see all the information. You're going to have to have a phone or some kind of device to be able to monitor them. And the other thing it's missing is it's not a heated battery. So uh, this is not a battery you'd want to put in a location that could possibly get below freezing. So one other thing I could not find on the battery or in the manual or on their website, I couldn't find where this battery has been UL certified. And that may be something that some people require depending on where they're installing it and what their application is. So these batteries come with four cables. So one's just a little ground wire and the other is a little ethernet cable. This is for the inner battery communication. And as long as these are stacked on top of each other, this short cable will reach. And it also includes two battery cables and these are two gauge, 200 degrees Celsius, high temperature cables. This is a silicone rubber, high stranded cable, very flexible cable. These are good quality battery cables. They're long enough to reach between the server rack batteries or long enough to reach to the side to the bus bar if you had it in a cabinet. So now I'm gonna take these batteries and I'm gonna wire them up to the 12K PV. I'm gonna disconnect the wall mount battery and run it only off of these two server rack batteries and we'll get it wired up we'll get the communication working and make sure it all works the way it should by the way these batteries weigh about 95 pounds they're not light go ahead and pop a couple of these battery covers off
So I put my battery cables where it went inward and you still should be able to get these on. Just gotta start them and then twist them over. Just getting the battery cables hooked up that are gonna go up to the inverter. So we'll go ahead and turn off the battery BMS and turn off the breaker. I'm also gonna open this up and I'm going to unplug the battery communication cable from that battery. All right, I got the eco-worthy battery hooked up to the negative and positive bus bar that's in here. And I've turned off the battery breaker on the inverter as well. That way we don't accidentally turn it on when we're not ready. So I've got the dip switch on this battery set to number one. So this is the master battery. It's the one that's gonna communicate with the inverter and it's gonna talk down to the other batteries. And I've got this one set at address number two. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the breaker, and power up the BMS on both of these. So now that the batteries are booted up, I can use the app to communicate to it. So I'll select one of the server rack batteries and then I'll go to parameters and then I'm gonna to go to inverter protocol. This is where you set up your communi communication. And then I'm gonna to go to CAN bus protocol. And I have selected LXP for Lux Power. That's who makes this inverter. But if I scroll through here, you can see there is several different choices of inverters that this should be able to talk to. So quite a few choices in here. So now I've got the communication protocols set in the batteries. Uh, one thing I forgot to do was put in the inner battery communication cable and it is going to go from the output on the master battery to the four RS485 input on the, the other battery. And for our inverter communications, we'll plug into the CAN bus port and we'll plug the other end into the battery communication port on the inverter. So the battery symbol went from red to green as soon as it got communication going. It says the batteries are 100% state of charge and they're 51.4 volts. So as I pull up the monitoring app, I can see that it knows there's two batteries in parallel. It knows there's a total of 200 amp hours there. And I'm sure if I go into the screen, I can even find more information. So we'll go in here and we'll look at the battery. And with that battery communication, this sees the state of charge, it sees the total battery voltage, it sees the maximum cell voltage, minimum cell voltage, has the temperatures, min and max as well. It has all the battery information here. And since all the information in here is populated and it all seems to be correct, we know that the communication between the inverter and the batteries is, is working properly. And right now, we have a lot of solar coming in, so the solar is actually running everything. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll kill the solar and we'll let the batteries take over and run it for a while. Well, we're only pulling like a thousand watts out of the inverter right now, so we are pulling just over 20 amps off of both batteries. We'll see how many is coming from this one. Just at 10, so it's splitting the load evenly. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick on the oven, maybe the dryer in the house and see if we can get the wattage up and see how many amps we can pull from these batteries. All right, we got it ramped up. You can hear the fans going. All right, hopefully you can see that 167 amps, which is the max the inverter will actually use. All right, I think we've fully tested that battery communication output with capacity. Um, I think we ran it through the paces and right now first impressions is it does seem to be a good battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the solar back on. We'll go ahead and top these batteries back off before I disconnect them. So I've got this server rack battery pulled up on Amazon. And when you first look at it, it says it's $999. But there's actually a coupon down here and you have to check mark the coupon. It'll take an extra $120 off and then I'll make this $879, which is, it's a good price for a server rack battery. So if you're interested in this, I'll leave a link down in the description below. But I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. So hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time.